Okay, so if you actually have some basic geometry knowledge and skills, well then this should be a very easy problem to solve without the aid of a calculator. All right, so what's the situation? Well, we have this circle and we want to determine how far it will travel to the right by taking two full turns or two complete revolutions. So that would look something like this. Here is our circle. It's going to do one turn and then it's going to do another turn. So the question is, how far will it travel by doing these two turns? Okay, so this is a multiple choice question and here is our options. So A, 15 feet, B, 19 feet, C, 23 feet, or D, 26 feet. And these are approximate answers. So again, uh, you don't have to have the most precise um, uh, answer to figure this thing out. Again, you can do this without the aid of a calculator, but if you want to use your calculator, that is fine. But either way, if you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, we'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, Check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's go ahead and take one more look at this problem. So we have this circle and it's going to be turning uh, two complete, time, two complete uh, turns to the right, All right? So this would be one revolution. And then it's obviously it's going to continue on and do two revolutions. So it's going in this direction. How far did it travel? All right. So again, these are our answer choices. So let's go ahead and take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer, by the way, uh, the question is how far will it travel in two turns, right? So that is a very important detail. But the correct answer is B, approximately 19 feet. Okay. So this is the right answer. And if you figure this out, you definitely get a happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence because you appear to be a certified professional expert in the area of circumference, okay? Because this is what we need to understand in order to solve the problem, okay? And this is a very basic geometry concept. And if you forgot uh, what circumference is all about, you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I kind of remember that, but I'm totally lost, no problem. Uh, this is not that difficult, but again, 19 feet is uh, the correct answer, but it is not the most precise answer. Okay, in other words, uh, given this information, the actual answer will be a little bit different. But remember, this is a multiple choice question, so you have to pick the one that's closest. You have to pick the uh, number that's closest to the actual answer, and this is by far uh, the closest to uh, the actual value of this um, uh, situation. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. And again, we need to understand something about circumference. Now, some of you out there might be thinking, oh, yes, uh, circles, Mr. YouTube Math Man. I remember uh, studying circles. Uh, you know, I was uh, on my text or I was uh, checking my text messages that day. I forget, but I do think there's some like formulas that you need to know about circles. And you would be right. And there are a few formulas that I think everyone should store in their long term memory. Now, in mathematics, there is a ton of formulas that you need to know for both algebra and geometry, and uh, it's just too much to uh, try to memorize all these formulas. But when it comes to basic shapes like circles or rectangles or squares and things like that, you should uh, actually commit to memorizing some of these formulas. All right, so I'm just going to write a couple formulas down here, pi r squared. I'm not telling you what this is, uh, 2 pi r and uh, d times pi. So hopefully these things uh, trigger some memory. You're like, oh yeah, yeah let's do two math, man. I think, uh, I think these right here have to do with circumference. Well, you would absol uh, absolutely be correct. Uh, these two are the formula for circumference, but what is circumference? Well, just to uh, you know finish this uh, little uh, thing up about formulas for circles, this happens to be the formula for the area of a circle. So this is not gonna help us out in this situation, what we need to understand is circumference. All right, so let's talk about that right now. And then, of course, we can see how this is going to, or I'll show you how this is going to uh, be the secret to figuring this problem out. 
All right, so what is circumference? Now, this is the formula for circumference, but let me give you a simpler example of uh, this concept. So let's suppose we have a rectangle and uh, we have the measures of this rectangle. Let's say this is two and this is like four, right? And this is a rectangle, so this would be four and this would be two. If I uh, wanna find the perimeter of this rectangle, what is that, okay, and how would I find it? Well, the perimeter of this rectangle is the total sum of uh, the distance around this figure. Okay, so we would take four plus two plus this four plus this two. So we have two and two, that's four. Then we have four and four, that's eight. So the perimeter of this rectangle is 12. It's the total distance around that figure. Now the word perimeter is also used in things like, you know, different kind of uh, shapes, what we call irregular figures, like polygons like this, or uh, different type of uh, shapes. So basically what you would do is you would just get the sides and add this up, right? That would be the perimeter. Now when we're talking about circles, this concept of perimeter, we don't use that word perimeter. We use the word circumference, okay? So circumference is effectively the perimeter of a circle. All right, so what does that mean? Well, it means that if I wanna know the distance around this circle, I wanna calculate the circumference. So kind of imagine that you had a uh, piece of yarn or some sort of string or whatnot, and you're like, you know what, I have this circle, and let's suppose it's something, maybe it's sitting on your, your dining room table or your desk or something like that, and you needed to really figure out the distance around that circle. So one thing you could do is get like a little piece of string and then just kind of wrap it around this circle and stop, right? So, and then you could take that string and then just kind of lay it out. You just, okay, wrap, unwrap that string and then uh, get that distance right here that it took you to wrap around the circle. That is one way to calculate the circumference by using a string. But we really want, uh, don't want to do that. We want to use this formula, okay? So the circumference is equal to the diameter times pi, okay? And this is going to be key because uh, one wrap around the circle is like one turn, okay? So in other words, if we have this uh, string right here rolled out and we just kind of wanted to test if in fact we did this right, we would set our circle like so and we would do one complete turn and we would wrap up that string. And that's an important concept to understand for this particular problem. But let's talk a little bit more about circumference. All right, so the circumference of a circle uh, there's basically two formulas. The first is uh, the diameter times pi. The second formula, it means the same thing, but uh, if you have the diameter, the diameter is the width of a circle, okay? Technically, it runs through the center, and uh, even to be more kind of technical about this, it's what we call the longest chord uh, in a circle. So a, a line segment that goes from one side of a circle to another, you can have all sorts of little short ones, you know, longer ones, but the longest one, the longest chord, these are called chords, uh, the longest chord of a circle is called the diameter and it runs through the center of the circle. Now from the center all the way to the edge of the circle is something called the radius. So the circumference of a circle you could um, uh, define as two times the radius times pi, okay, or two pi r. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about um, pi so pi is one of the most powerful numbers of all of mathematics, and a super rough approximation for pi is 3.14. Okay, now uh, why just 3.14? Well, you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, just give me the whole number. Well, you and I don't have that amount of time in our lifetimes because uh, the digits that extend on this number go out to infinity, okay? This is what we call an irrational number. Uh, the digits don't repeat and they don't terminate. So there's just no way we can write out the entire number of pi. It, again, it goes to infinity, so we use approximations. So this is a really, really rough approximation for pi 3.14, but uh, we'll be using this to solve this problem. Okay, so now you know what pi is, you know what d is, that's a diameter, and uh, we know the formula for circumference and we kind of understand uh, what the circumference is. It's the perimeter, okay? of the circle, or of a circle. And uh, one interesting thing too about pi, some people may be like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, where does this number come from, 3.14? Well, if you take the circumference of any circle 
and you divide it by the diameter, you get pi. Okay, so if you're ever curious about where pi comes from, uh, that is what it is. All right, so let's go ahead and continue to develop uh, the strategy to figure this problem out. Okay, so here in our problem, we know that this circle, okay, this uh, little figure is basically telling you that the diameter is 3b. Okay, so how far in two turns? Well, remember, we have this like little string concept, like so. If we can get that sh uh, string distance, that is the circumference, and we unwrap that, that would be the amount, uh, that would be the distance the circle will travel in one turn. Okay, so we have to calculate the circumference for one turn, and then to get two turns, well, that should be pretty easy for you to figure out. So let's go and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, just don't you love the way I have to kind of sneak that in? Well, I'm sneaking this in because it's important to me. Now, why is this important to me? Well, it's important to me to help as many people as possible. And YouTube really does, uh, you know, look at how many people subscribe to your channel, how many people watch your channel, how many people, you know, like your videos. These little, you know, metrics uh, really um, help YouTube determine, hey, maybe this guy's not so bad, or this person's uh, content is not too bad. Maybe it can actually help other people. And that is the whole idea behind my channel. I'm trying to really help as many people as I possibly can learn mathematics and give them a lot of encouragement so they don't give up on the subject. Now, what we're talking about here, I'll give you some specific suggestions on how you can learn more about circumference and circles and basic geometry. But uh, all I need you to do right now is to hit that subscribe button to show your support for what I do. And if you're gonna do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, so let's go ahead and put this all together. So here is our circle. We have a diameter of three. And uh, let's suppose we didn't have a calculator. Okay, like, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm just gonna do this really, really, really super fast. Now, this is good because sometimes your teacher, your math teacher, and this is especially the case when you get into more advanced level math, they don't really care about uh, the approximate precise answer. Now, they do when it comes to like engineering type problems, but when it comes to just uh, showing or demonstrating your knowledge of the concepts, you know, they're more interested in your problem solving uh, mechanics, if you will, okay? And in this case, we know that pi is 3.14, but let's just even make it, let's just even make it simple, simple by rounding that 3.14 to three. Now that's a super rough <laughs> approximation for pi, but this is the type of problem you can figure out in your head. All right, so if the diameter is uh, three, three feet, and uh, let's use uh, uh, three for pi. Now again, that's a really, really rough approximation. Well, what would be the circumference? Well, it's the diameter times pi, or three times three, or roughly, uh, very, you know, uh, rough approximation, nine feet. Okay, so in one turn, this uh, circle, one uh, complete revolution, would go a little bit. It would go nine feet, but it would go more than nine feet because we are rounding down on pi. But it at least gives us a sense, <coughs> excuse me, of um, uh, the distance. Remember, this is a multiple choice question. So if it goes roughly nine feet in one turn, how far is it gonna travel in two turns? Well, hopefully you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube 2 math man, I think it's going to travel uh, uh, two times nine, which would be like 18. Well, it's actually a little bit more than 18, right? Because pi, here, we round it down. This is like 3.14 and there's other digits. That is going to increase, you know, our answer. But it's definitely going to be at least 18 and uh, probably, you know, pretty close to 19. Well, is it going to be 15? No, it's not going to be 15 because there's no way you can really get 15, you know, from the circumference here, right? So... Uh, is it going to be 23? No, that's too much. And here the obvious choice is 19. You know, it's, this is 18 and some decimal. So again, multiple choice question. You're going to pick the best answer for the situation. Now let's just go ahead and uh, actually calculate um, a more precise um, value for this situation. So the circumference is equal to the diameter times pi. So uh, we have three. Okay. And by the way, uh, remember, we are dealing with units of measure, so three feet. We'll just use three, okay, for now for this particular problem. Now, you could pull up pi on your calculator. You can look it up on the internet. And again, uh, the digits go on to infinity, all right? Now, the more digits you use, the more precise your answer is going to be. So I'm not going to kind of uh, even um, 
really get into how I'm rounding off here, and we're not going to talk about significant digits or rounding, nothing out like that. I don't want to get too crazy here with this video, but I am going to use a lot more digits of pi. So pi, we, we could have used 3.14. We used three, that which is super rough, but we can use 3.14, which is a pretty uh, rough approximation as well. But if you want a more precise answer, let's, let's use more digits. So we have 3.14. Uh, 145926, and this can continue to go on and on. But we could take this, multiply it by 3, and we'll get something approximately 9.424. Uh, uh, and again, I'm rounding off here, then we can multiply that by 2, and we'll get 18.8495. You kind of see the idea. We're getting pretty close to 19 here. All right, so a couple main uh, concepts uh, to remember in this particular problem. Okay, so the first concept is to remember that when you have a multiple choice question uh, on some sort of math exam, use the answers uh, to really make the problem as easy as possible because you don't have to go and uh, calculate the most precise uh, solution here. All you have to do is select the best answer. Okay, so you can feel free to kind of round off values like pi down to three, especially if you don't have a calculator. Make the problem as easy as possible. The second thing is, uh, you definitely need to know some of these formulas, okay? Things like circumference, area of a circle, you know, basic algebra formulas. There's a lot of formulas in math, but uh, when it comes to basic geometry, particularly circles, you certainly should try to uh, put that uh, circumference formula into your long-term memory. All right, now, some of you out there might be studying uh, geometry at a deeper level, and if you want to learn more about geometry, let me give you a couple quick suggestions. First of all, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel, but uh, let me give you a few other options for you. So in my pre-algebra uh, course, I have a couple chapters on basic geometry, right? And so if you're interested in algebra and some basic geometry, check out my pre-algebra course. Now, if some of you want to rebuild your math skill and really cut math skills, excuse me, uh, check my Math Skills Rebuilder course. Now, in this particular course, I cover basic math, a ton of algebra, a ton of geometry, even some basic trigonometry, and some basic probability and statistics. And uh, for those of you out there that are actually studying full-on geometry, well, you can find a link to my full geometry course in the description of this video. Matter of fact, uh, the links to all these courses uh, will be down there. But whatever you do, you're not going to improve in solving problems like this unless you get the basic concepts down. So if you look at this problem, you're like, oh, I can't you know, uh, figure these things out. Well, make sure that you've done the work to understand the basic concepts, right? So get some full instruction, do a lot of practice problems, and you will definitely get better at solving these type of little fun problems. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.